Yo, everyone, and welcome to an I'm fanfic for you. Today, we're going to explore an interesting hypothetical scenario of what if Issei was betrayed by his girls and became the master of Grand Order. But before we start, please consider subscribe to the channel and give this video a like. Now, let's start to part 1. Issei Haidu a true hero who saved his world from the Beast of Apocalypse. One day he didn't went to the party to celebrate their victory against Chaos Brigade and the Beast of Apocalypse because today was the day was when his grandfather died. He said his grandfather was a respectful man who said to the young Issei, does it frustrated you kid? Does it upset you to be the weakest one? That's good, hold on to that feeling. It's proof that feeling means you are not yet ready to give up on yourself. Those words hit very deeply in Issei he didn't remember them until now when those memories flowed back to him when his grandpa spoke to him. After finishing giving the respects to the grandpa. Issei decided to go to the party, but what he saw broke his heart and made the leaders angry and sad for him reason why. It's because the Grimory group, including Kuroka, Lefei, Yasaka were flirting and kissing random men. Everyone was thinking of punishing them, but Issei didn't want to instead he said, they gotta swear that they don't regret the decision, so that day changed Issei who started to pursue his passion with sword, including saving someone who became someone precious to him, and ones he loves named Ingvold Leviathan, Lyda Astareth, Omenhol Karnstein office. After finishing college, making his parents proud he decided to help the factions, not known three of the most beautiful women of the factions were in love with him, since he also saved them. Reason why he was helping the factions was because he needed the money for a surprise for his beloved that being a ring. But sadly things don't go as they planned because one day Azazel started a machine that would travel dimensions and accidentally he sucked. What happens to our beloved hero? Why is the summoning heroes from the past? And how come he can't use all the power of the booster gear? And will he use his sword skills? And why is he together with a girl saving humanity? Scene change. We currently see Issei Haidu walk alongside with his parents to a Japanese house. It was a massive building left for Issei for being his best grandson, and now they entered into the building. The house seemed clean like it was clean every week as they arrived near a shrine show a picture of a man and a woman. As the family all clap their hand in respect and speak to the two in the photo in the picture. Boru. Thank you Mr. Kurgain and Mrs. Vermilion as I promise I stayed with Mickey because she is the love of my life. I didn't care if she couldn't give birth to Issei older siblings. I didn't care about what my family said about leaving her I will stick by her side forever like I promise you. Mickey. Thank you dad. For raising me in a good family along with mom. I wish to tell you that our family may grow some more. I'll protect her like you done for me and raise her to be strong like you done with me. And I'll surprise Issei with this news soon. Issei. Thank you grandpa. I just remembered your words and I will never forget them ever again I'll keep them forever in my heart for the future and make you proud. And grandma I've been cleaning your sword daily till the day I can wield it along with grandpa's sword, but I still don't think I can wield the sword you two gave me, but I give it a try. I still don't know what you mean by the sword is like me I promise you I won't let fear take me. He said looking at the sword of his grandparents, along with an another sword being a large silver single-edged sword. They all said their piece to the two in the photo, as happy memories began to flow. We they finished their piece Issei received a text from Kiba, saying that the party is already starting a celebration of defeating the Beast of Apocalypse and Chaos Brigade. So Issei turned to his parents and hugged them and said. Issei. I got to go. But I promise that I'll change and make you guys and grandpa and grandma proud. I'll probably get back with the sword and study hard for you guys. He said as he had a smile on his face and the expression of his parents made him feel good because their show a face of happiness. So Issei turned around and get ready to leave with a pamphlet to get there faster instead of taking the train, but was stopped by his parents. Boru. Take care of yourself in that party of yours. And remember we'll always be proud of you, and if something happens you can talk to us. He said as he saw his son off with a smile. Mickey. Yes you can tell us anything, and if you need love advice with the girls. Then ask me about it it's better to ask the same gender, and take your time I know I said I want grandkids, but take your time. Issei. Don't worry everything will be alright. I better get going I'm the man of honor of course. He said while heading off to a distance away from his parents to see him vanishing with a pamphlet. Without knowing that problem will show themselves when he would arrive and hurt his heart but. In darkness there will always be a light for those that need it. Lucifer Castle. We see Issei teleport near some big double doors, as guards who saw him smiled as they start to open the door are protagonists who use magic to change his outfit for the party. When the door opens the guards gave him compliment like, your suit fit you nicely, there goes our hero. That made our protagonist happy and thank them and wish them well and enjoy this peace with their family and loved ones. Make the guards give him a gentle smiles and nod. When he enters everyone was happy on seeing him and for some reason they could feel a change inside him. 
that made a few smile as they wave at him give him compliments as he was looking around for his girls, but met up with Kiba and Gasper together with their partners Tsubaki and Valerie as he went to greet them. They say. Hey guys enjoy the party. And thank for the heads up Kiba and sorry I had family matters to attend, he said waving at them as he walked up to them and thanked Kiba. Will also act like a gentleman and handshake his friends and kiss the girl's hands. This action left his two friends and the girl surprised by his actions it seemed him dealing with those family matters, made him act mature, or change him. Kiba. Ah it's no problem say kun you're my friend and as you said you were busy with family matters. Also are you okay? He said worried about his best friend if something was wrong. Asper. Yeah you're acting like a gentleman all of sudden. He said curiously wondering what happened to his idol and friend. Tsubaki. Yes hi do are you okay? You seem to mature what is the sudden change? She said, also very surprised and curious along with Valerie, since she heard about him from Gasper. They say. Well you see I just remember a conversation I had with someone very important to me, and I thought of changing my attitude and improving my reputation as the Red Dragon Emperor, then the Op High Dragon. Don't get me wrong I'm still a pervert, but I think I should save that with the girl in private. This left the four completely shocked, and a few people who were also listening to the conversation the hero of the factions. Is maturing. This made a few start whispering somewhere happy for the new change. Of Issei especially a couple of girls who are interested in him who also heard of this new change of Issei. Meanwhile, inside the boosted gear, a certain red dragon was starting to cry, tears of joy, as it seemed, his partner is starting to change and start to improve his reputation. As the dragon couldn't help but just cry and give in a happy dance. Kiba. Oh I see well I'm happy for you. And I must say I like this new change of yours. He said happy for his best friend. Asper. Yeah I'm happy for you senpai. He said happy and wished to follow his example. The girls with the two also agreed they were happy for this new change of Issei, it seems he's starting to think more about the future and couldn't help but just bring out a smile on them. Issei. Yeah thanks a lot guys by the way have you guys seen Ria's and the girls around I haven't seen them yet. He said looking around the room to spot his beloved switch princess. Kiba. Sorry I haven't seen her yet, but if you like we can help you out right guys. He said to everyone else as they all nodded to help out Issei. As they look around from them. The party's music began to change the moment when he spotted one of his beloved, but in the situation that he never imagined he saw Ria's Gremory kissing another man, and it wasn't just her but Asia Argeno, Akeno Himejima, Zenovia Korda, Kaneko Taoju, Irina Shidu, Roswis, Ravel Phoenix, Kuroka, Lefe Pendragon, Yusaka. This shattered the heart of Issei. Meanwhile the leaders of the faction were looking for Issei as they saw him frozen they were about to reach over to him, but they noticed the people he was with were try to get a reaction from him, but they turned to the direction on what Issei was staring at, and they too were left in shock. This made the leader turn to the direction of where they were staring at made them wish that they never saw what was in front of them. This also made the girls who had feelings for Issei build up a fury like no one ever imagined. Serzich's was the most hurt of this. He was just going to announce a say rank to a high-class devil and thank him for everything he has done for them. He turned to his wife Grafia, who was also in shock with an expression of anger and sadness. She like a say like a brother and seeing this would change everything. The Juka was surprised by what he saw. They love a say right? Why would they do this if he gave them everything he could give only to make them happy? He turned in a direction specifically, his cousin Lyda Astareth was furious her aura only made it seem like she would destroy anything in her path. Ajuka knew the feeling Lida has for Issei ever since he supported the Astroth clan, because of the reputation that a certain ex-heir has done, but Issei fix it, say he hate him not the clan itself, and said that he will protect them and Lida, and if someone had a problem with them, then they have to go through him. Now Ajuka seeing Lida mad over what the girls did to Issei. He can see that old love is gone, but new love starts. Seraphal was angry she wished she could freeze the girls into a popsicle. Reason well it's because she's in love with Issei, and she was considering on confess her feelings to him because he did something and that was saving her from Treek's attack and cost of his own life, but she wasn't the only one who was saved that day there are two other. And she knows that their anger as well as her. Riser he was angry along with his family, they thought Ravel had feelings for Issei who would their brother-in-law son-in-law, but maybe not also Riser was being stopped by his queen from doing anything stupid. Lady Phoenix was crying not because of her daughter no, it was for Issei, and no that is a good boy as well impressed by his determination. As for Lord Phoenix had respect for him since he was willing to do whatever he could for the one he cares for. Azazel was surprised and angry and at the same time disappointed on them. He was with Issei a lot and he considers him like a son, but he quickly shivered because of Penemuora of fury. Arachiel was disappointed on Akeno he like Issei, but it seems he wasn't enough for her. So he turned and saw Penemu anger. 
he would still protect Akeno as a last act of a father, and he knew if Shuri was here she would be disappointed on her let her own decisions and wouldn't help her anymore. Meanwhile in a distance, we can see someone similar to Akeno, but her eyes are red and was wearing a kimono that had eyes of disappointment while also checking on Issei as she felt a pain on her chest when she saw his expression of lost. She was together with a group of two males and three females. Enemy was angry, furious. The people around her were very scared they all believed that she might kill them. Causing a few people to try to stop her. But they were too scared to even try and just watched over her. She doesn't know why she's angry, but knew she had to follow her feelings all this because of saving her life from the beast of apocalypse, so she decided to repay him one day. Michael disappointed and very sad. Seeing a good person like Issei hurt like this really hurt his heart and he was very disappointed on Irina for cheating on Issei and was thinking of a suitable punishment for her, but then he together with his brothers and sisters felt a strong aura. So they all turned and saw it was none other than Gabriel. Gabriel was angry even if her face doesn't show it, even if her eyes were shut and showing a smile, it didn't really help because the air around her and her aura was so intimidating. She cared for Issei since he also saved her life from the beast of the apocalypse. Griselda was very disappointed on Zenovia she practically raised her, not to mention she also said that she would bear Issei children for a strong child. You can't make a strong child with just the best genes. You have to raise and nurture it. She felt sorry only she raised her better. As she saw Issei with sadness. Aten only had his eyes shut, he really wanted to race that off his memory, he always teased Rossweiss on having a boyfriend she got one. And he believed she would be happy being with him. He predicted it, but it seems predictions never come true. Bondel didn't know what to do her granddaughter betrayed someone that really loved her not to mention she broke a rule for Valkyries. And she cheated on her partner it was a disgrace and dishonor to a Valkyrie she looked around and saw Valkyries in disappointment at her and we're disgusted by her. Rossweiss has lost her right on being a Valkyrie. Bondel continued to look around and saw a white-haired Valkyrie by the name of Adelweiss who was looking at Issei with pain. Gondel remembered that Roswius was angry that Adelweiss was being close to Issei, since this was happening, Adelweiss could probably be with Issei, and maybe it would be the best Gondel thought. Zeus was very concerned about the boy he liked this kid and thought of him as a brother in arms. He began to feel as this how heroes are treated. Do they always get their bad endings? Shiva had his eyes closed. He felt sorry for the boy, so he decided to check on his future, and what he saw was something interesting. His heart will be fixed by two people this night, but there was more he couldn't help but grin, the future for Issei is going to be very interesting. Elmahold was angry. Her red piercing eyes was staring at the Gremory group with hatred. She really wanted to slap those girls in the cheek, but she needed to focus on Issei instead and was only thinking of ways on helping him through this. Kunu was very sad. She almost had tears in her eyes she considered Issei as a father figure she really believed that her mother seeing how many times she tries to flirt with him or grab him with her tails. But it seems a simple wish on, thinking Issei would be her father just vanish and started hating her mother. Zona was very disappointed on her best friend and her group for doing this to Issei, she began to look at her peerage who also gave the same expression on disappointment, but on one of them showed anger, and it was none other than Momo Hanakai in truth, Sona knew she had feelings for Issei she never had any for Saji, it was only to get his attention because they were childhood friends. As for the other heirs such as Sereard Beale, who had his fist clenched with frustration and anger on what's happening to his rival and friend, but was stopped by his queen Kusha Abaddon and his own mother Misha Beale, who look at Issei with pain in her chest, since Sararog said that Issei was the one who woke her up, make Misha develop some interest on Issei, but was also embarrassed that he uses his ability to speak to her breast. The next heir is Ikvara Gares, who had the coldest stare that made the boys that are with the girls shiver in fear as she was friends with Issei and consider him a good friend not to mention, she has a bit of feelings for him, but she can't express it. Valerie didn't know what to feel she felt angry on what those girls were doing to her rival and best friend and crush. She would juggernaut drive on them if it wasn't for Lavinia who was holding her hand Lavinia felt the same way like Valerie she was interested on Issei for help Valerie on her past and not to mention when they first met slash dog bar, he sing a duet with her and also wished to support. Her wouldn't hesitate on helping. And it wasn't just her. It was also Arthur who was being holed by Elaine Westcott. As for Biku, he could only shake his head on disappointment on a two female partners and only thought that the trouble is just starting. Meanwhile Issei in his state was in pain, but the word of his grandmother. You'll find the warmth one day. That will save you one day so don't stop and continue to look for it or be surprised when you find it. Just like me when I found Icky. Issei, mind. 
how cruel I did everything for them, and this is how they pay me back, I supported their dreams, protected them from anything that would come to harm them, all I wanted was to feel love and have that warmth on what my family said, I guess they're on their own, I won't support them anymore, I won't help them, they chose them right, I let them take my place. I hope they have no regrets. He had a sad expression, but trying to act happy, but then he was supported by his best friend and partner. Greg, connection. Partner you don't deserve to cry for them they are not worth your time. I promise you that you will find the happiness you're looking for. Just like your grandmother says it will appear one day. He said supporting his partner like a friend, and since he got to know the real Issei. Issei. Had a smile on his face as he began to wipe off those tears, you're right thank you Drake he said in a whisper, but then all of a sudden he was pat on the shoulder, and it was none other than Serzic who had a face of worried. Serzic. Issei I'm sorry for what Riaz has done. I'll give anything you want as an apology he said sadly and surprising the guests that he would get anything, but they also felt sad and angry on the girls who were holding hands with their boyfriends watching this thinking why does he get a reward. Issei. Thank you Serzic. There's actually three things I wish for. I wish for Riaz and the girls to leave my house, and to also turn it back to normal this surprise, everyone, but Riaz didn't like that she had to be kicked out. Riaz. Issei you can't just kick us she was interrupted by her brother who showed off an aura of anger. The first time he was ever angry on her, surprised her, and made her shiver. Serzic. Riaz be quiet I order you as the Mao Lucifer he said, as his penetrating gaze stared at her, which also made Riaz's boyfriend to piss his pants in fear. He then turned to Issei with an understanding face. Understood I'll have Grafia to start packing their things and move out. But as for the house, it's a gift, I cannot change it back to normal, but I can however, make it a little bit smaller, since you won't be needing the extra rooms if that's alright with you he said, since it was a gift for Issei. Issei. Not an understanding as he said, I understand I accept those terms. As for my second wish I wish to tell my parents about the supernatural, I can't keep hiding the secret anymore. Also, I wish to remove the hypnosis that Riaz has put them. Everyone is surprised. He is going to expose the supernatural to his parents. Also, they were further disappointed that Riaz used hypnosis on them. Serzic. Was surprised with the supernatural had to be kept secret, but he understood his safe feelings he couldn't keep it a secret anymore to his parents. He turned to look at the other leaders as they are given of approval, except for Yusaka, I understand you're free to tell them about the supernatural, I hope you can explain it to them properly. And I'm sorry again for what Riaz has done. He was disappointed on his sister. Even more how far will she bring down the Gremory name. Issei. As for my last wish I wish to become a free devil, and as you can see I can't serve Riaz anymore, he said leaving everyone in shock, including Riaz herself she was going to argue. But she was then again shut down by her brother. As he gave a smile since now he can announce Issei promotion. Serzic. I don't think that is necessary this left Issei and everyone else in the room completely shocked, except for the leaders well Yasaka didn't know though. Issei. What do you mean Serzic? Very confused and wondering what the Mayu had in mind. Serzic. Issei Haidu I would like to announce that you have been promoted to high class, you do not have to take the test as you have proven it with your actions. Me and the rest of the leaders have approved this. Congratulations. Everyone in the room were surprised including Issei who didn't know how to feel anymore he felt very happy. He achieved one of his goals. Even though that goal was supposed to be the same rank as Ria's and to prove that he's an equal with her. But things changed. As for the girls, they were completely surprised that he made it to high class somewhere, thinking that he will complete his promise, since they promised that they would join a safe peerage when he becomes high class. Author's note. Wow what a bunch of morons. Well, one of them is a moron who thinks with her fist, and instead of brain. Issei. He was happy as he had a smile as everyone around him began to clap their hands and congratulations, it seems to live up the mood. Everyone thank you. I'll do my best. He said with a lot of emotions, but had a question of uh, when will I receive my evil pieces. Before Serzic could even say anything he was interrupted by Ajuka. Ajuka. You can come to my laboratory tomorrow. I believe you need some time for yourself don't you? He said, as Issei nodded while he began to take out the pamphlet and was ready to teleport back to the human world but was stopped by the girls. Asia. Issei sent congratulations on your promotion. Does that mean you're going to fulfill your promise that I would join your peerage? Said very innocently without noticing that Issei stayed frozen. As everyone began to wonder if she a moron. But before Issei could say anything he was interrupted by two other girls. Ravel. That right Issei Sama you promised that to my mother that I would join your peerage again, everyone was silent as the phoenix were disappointed on Ravel, even her mother was upset like, did she really say that? Zenovia. 
That right is say you promised that I would be knight, since my life wouldn't be interested with you around, don't tell me you've forgotten. Now everyone was disappointed and angry clearly that declaration should mean I'll always be with you. The say was in total silence are these three idiots. They're literally saying this right now. And do they expect him to have them around even while they broke his heart? Unknown to Issei he began to let out an intimidating aura, along with the help of Drake who is also pissed off, made it even terrifying. Issei. Are you idiots or what? Are you really saying that right now even though you guys cheated on me? You guys really think I would accept you to join my peerage? He yelled out in frustration and anger. What makes them think he would let them join? Asia. But Issei sent you but she then shut her mouth seeing Issei angry expression, gazing at her. Issei. I know I said I promise, but that promise is broken because of you girls I won't make you join my peerage. He and Fury as Asia began to cry making Zenovia angry on Issei attitude towards her. Zenovia. Issei. Stop yelling you're making Asia cry or else I have to use X to Rendell. She said, drawing her sword leaving everyone in shock are you seriously pulling out your sword. But even before she could go over and reach Ice, she was then stopped by Griselda who welled a light sword that left Zenovia in shock by being stopped by her mentor mother figure. Zenovia was going to say something, but was punched in the stomach by Griselda, causing Zenovia to drop X to Rendell, and was being cured by Asia who was in shock that Griselda would do this to Zenovia, as the mentioned Griselda pick up X to Rendell, while stare at Zenovia in disappointment. Griselda. You idiot did you really draw your sword in a party? I really do think you have to take re-education, but this time I won't be there to teach you anymore, and as punishment I'm taking this away, you don't deserve Durendal she said walking towards Lord Michael, who took the sword and was considering something, so began to speak to his brothers and sisters. While well, Zenovia was left in shock. Zenovia. What are you talking about Griselda? She said very confused on what she meant not teaching her anymore. Griselda. Just like I said I ain't teaching you anymore. I am done with this attitude of yours. I believe you would change while well being with Issei Kun, but no, you haven't changed at all. Also, you no longer hold the name Korda I am disowning you, I no longer consider you as my daughter, this left Zenovia petrified the only family she had abandoned her. She didn't know what to feel not to mention that her boyfriend isn't doing anything to help her at this moment. Also see and a few guests haven't realized that Griselda said Issei Kun instead of Haidu well, except for a few girls who are interested in Issei. Meanwhile Issei was surprised that Griselda save him, and also that he called him Issei Kun instead of Haidu like she always does. But like an idiot he didn't think much about it as he looked at Griselda with smile and grateful for what she had done. But he didn't know from this action made the Queen of Hearts had a tent of pink in her cheek. As she shook her head on thinking of being with a young man like Issei. But then an image crossed her mind of her together with Issei hold a baby. She immediately shook those images off her head. Issei. Well I better start going I have a lot to think about please enjoy the party and Ria's girls I hope you have no regrets he said as everyone said goodbye to Issei and as for the girl that mentally said that they had no regrets. Author's note. He they're going to regret it big time. Issei began to use the pamphlet to teleport away even though the girls that have feelings for him were going to try to stop him we stopped by Ajuka who said to give him time. Human world. Cow Park. We currently see Issei in Cow Park the place where he died and was turned into a devil. He changed his outfit with magic, having a black jacket with his classic red shirt, while wearing black jeans and some sneakers, as he begins to walk around the park thinking about his future, but then all of a sudden he heard a voice. It was someone singing. Out of curiosity he walked towards the direction of that singing, and as a beautiful foreign girl who appears to be in her late teens with long purple hair. She is wearing a white dress like a noble that exposes much of her large breasts, with high slits and long sleeves. She also wears a black miniskirt. This girl was currently singing a beautiful song that somehow captivated Issei, but not just him, but also Drake who felt like he heard the singing before when he was still alive. So with nothing else to do, he began to shut his eyes and move his head, following the rhythm of her singing for some reason it really brought him in peace he didn't know why. But it felt nice. After finishing her singing she opened her orange eyes before she spotted Issei who had his eyes closed and seemed to listen to her sing she was surprised and never realized someone was listening to her, but then a voice in her head spoke to her. Connection. Partner don't panic he is not here to hurt you. And his aura he has a sacred gear, and judging by the aura I think it's the Welsh dragon drag. The red dragon emperor so don't panic and trust me, the voice said to the girl who nod and talked to the voice. Connection. If you say so Kiri. But are you sure I can trust him? And what's your relationship with the red dragon emperor? The girl asked the voice. Kiri, connection. Of course Ingvul Chan you can trust him, and beside it he has no evil intentions instead, I could feel a great pain inside him, it seemed something must have happened to him, the voice said sadly as she could feel this boy pain, and how I know Drag. Well you can say that we're friends it's a long story. 
I'll be glad to tell you, but I think you need to focus your attention on him. The voice said all cheerfully when it came to drag her past. Ingvold, connection. Okay then, but I'm surprised that you know the Welsh dragon she said mentally as she can't wait to listen to another story about her partner and sacred gear Kiri, also known as Nerid Kiri. Ingvold focused her attention on Issei, and for some strange reason she could feel him in pain, and for some reason it hurt her see that. Meanwhile Issei who was in a trance of her slowly got his senses back, and he opened his eyes and noticed her staring back at him. Both started staring at each other. No one spoke they just looked at each other. Before the girl started to speak. Ingvold. Ah oh, you are the Red Dragon Emperor right? She said, very shy voice was so captivating made him pause for a second before he responded. Issei. Ah uh, yeah. Who are you? He said very surprised that someone knows about him, but he also couldn't lose focus she could be an enemy. Ingvold. Well Kiri told me I mean my sacred gear. She said pointing at her neck. Where appears a black necklace with purple gems, as her eyes turned purple when she materialized her sacred gear. Issei was surprised that she had a sacred gear, since he could feel that she's a devil and human like Valerie. As for Drag he was watching over this girl until he heard the name Kiri a memory came to mind when he was alive and he was fishing together with another dragon, this one being a sea dragon, as they both seemed to laugh together and be happy. She was the first female dragon that hasn't asked to fight him to be his mate or a dragon that tried to kill him no she was his first female friend. All of a sudden Issei boosted gear materialized and a voice spoke. Drag. Kiri is that you? He spoke from the green gem in a voice of disbelief and surprise. Kiri. Ah Drag it's good to see you I mean hear your voice. Ah you know what I mean she said with a small laugh. That caused Drag to laugh as well. Drag. Yeah I know what you mean. What are you doing here? Why are you sealed in a sacred gear? He asked worried about his friend and wondering how the hell did she become a sacred gear? Did God kill her? If he did Drag wish that he could kill him again, but Kiri next words left him in shock. Kiri. Oh about that I was killed by Tiamat she said dropping a huge bomb on Drag. Leaving our two pairs devil in surprise on her word. For Ingvold she never asked her because she thought it would bring her bad memories. For Issei he was in shock he knew Tiamat from Drag and asked him to stay away from her since she had killed all of Drag's former partner. Drag. Huh. Wait Tiamat why? I don't understand I need context. He basically shouted why did Tiamat kill his friend? What was the whole reason for that to happen? Kiri. Well one day I was staying in your territory since I was being chased by some male dragons, I was thinking of asking you to let me stay for a while, but you weren't around, so I believe you went to fight Albion. So I decided to rest in the beach and wait for your return, then all of a sudden I got attacked by a blue dragon I recognize as Tiamat. And as you know, I'm not much of a fighter so I began to run away. Swimming in the sea trying to lose her, but she kept trying to follow me and shouting you whore how dare you be around my mate I will kill you so you'll never be around him anymore, she said I was going to tell her that we are friends, but she didn't listen to me, so she caught me and killed me. Leaving everyone in the room silence the reason why she died was because of a jealous female dragon who thought of taking her mate. Drag. Was in shock that happened to his friend. Inside the boosted gear we can see Drake being enveloped with a red aura, and he was mad Tiamat killed his first female friend out of jealousy, he was pissed, he thought Kiri abandoned him, but no she was killed by Tiamat, and spoke to Issei partner, I'm going to ask you this are you with me? He shouted surprising Issei frightening Ingvold. Issei. A Drake you good? And what do you mean by I'm with you? Issei didn't know what to say he was scared. Drake. What I'm saying is that are you with me? On killing Tiamat she deserves to pay for what she did to Kiri he said, in a very scary voice that frightened the two devils. Issei. But Drag you told me to stay away from her. He shouted back, not wanting to die because of Drag influence. Drag. Change of plans partner besides, you're stronger than her if we use Diablo's dragon god, then we'll crush her. He said making Issei worried. Issei. Drag. Come back to your senses. You know I haven't mastered that form, right? And are we seriously going to use it on her? Before things could escalate fate seems to be on their side as stray devils be to appear, as they were all looking at Ingvold and making Issei to stand right in front of her, protecting her while materializing Ascalon from the boosted gear. Think Issei as Mordred and Ingvold as Kyrie. Imagine Ingvold using water slashes and use hot water like acid. As both of them finished their fight Issei was surprised that a girl like her could fight, so he began to ask her about that. Issei. So you know how to fight. Where did you learn how to do that? He asked her hold his sword while being in his armor. Ingvold. I am self-taught the people that look after me said I had to defend myself, so I've tried this really really hard. You were amazing with the sword. She said showing a pretty cute expression on how hard she really worked and then talk about him moving around and destroying the bigger stray devils. Issei. 
well it's all thanks to the drag, and I've practiced with a sword before, not to mention experience helps he said as he didn't want to take all the credit, but he did work hard with sword. But he needs to get back to training to improve. Ingvald. Had a complicated expression how many times has she's been attacked by stray devils. Then she realizing why it was because of her power and thought that she could bring trouble to a lot of people as Ingvald looked at Issei's sword and said Issei could you please kill me. This left Issei along with his partner Drag in shock as Kiri began to shout back. Kiri. Ingvald Chan no. I won't let you die I understand why you want to die. Not to mention you woke up from that sleep disease. The purple gem shouted at her partner without knowing that Issei heard what she said she had the sleep disease that puts devil into an everlasting sleep. Issei. You woke up from that disease wait that means you're older than me. He was surprised he didn't think she was that old, but can you how grave that disease was, it must mean that she doesn't know what happened in centuries. Ingvald. That right to say I am a lot older than I look I was asleep in this age, and I lost my adoptive parents when falling asleep for a hundred years, she said sadly about losing people who were important to her, and had a thought besides the people I knew are no longer here, and I'm sure no one would grieve for a stranger, so please Issei. Issei. He was saddened to hear her story that she lost the only people that can about her, and began to shake his head and said, I'll cry for you. I will be sad and mourn over your death because you're my friend. And besides, I believe that your adoptive parents would want you to live. He said as he made Ascalon disappear. And hold her hand as Ingvald begins to cry. Ingvald was surprised even though she met Issei, and they fought together for a little while and talk in a short time. He considered her friend as she cried, but then was surprised even further when Issei hugged her. They stayed silent as she continued to sniffle, but she gradually calmed down, and for some reason she felt a strong warmth in her chest, instead of pushing herself away from Issei, she wrapped herself tightly on Issei to receive more of that warmth. As for Issei he was surprised that Ingvald hugged him tightly, and also felt a warmth in his chest that was healing the pain he had suffered from the girls. Ingvald. Begins to look at Issei and says then I beg you help me Issei and teach me what I miss. She said in tears as she noticed Issei reassuring gaze. Issei. I promise you I will take care of you. We'll find out something about your treatment. We can do anything you want if you want to sing then I'll let sing. I'll even take you to the beach. He said this time he would make a new promise with a new friend, and he would keep it. But then all of a sudden they felt shivers a dark ominous feeling as around them as Issei was in front of Ingvald as he noticed someone appearing from the darkness. A beautiful young woman with a cute face of a child with long black hair and with pointy ears. She wears a cute frilly dress known as Virgin Killer that has a corset jumper skirt. Her body also gives out a tremendous dark aura. Issei was in guard he could tell that this woman is strong and using his senses, he knew she is not a devil, angel, fallen angel, but a divine aura, which means he's in front of a goddess. The woman in question was looking at them before she gazed to Issei who looked at, but had a shiver passing through his spine, but it got worse when she winked flirty towards him. Meanwhile Ingvald was jealous, but was also trembled a little when the goddess gave her a mocking look, making Ingvald hide her face in Issei's neck. As the goddess spoke to them. Goddess. Red Dragon Emperor also known as the Op-I Dragon, she said the title of Issei who decided to change it in the future because right in front of the girl he swore to protect, became embarrassing, meanwhile Kiri was laughing at Drake for such a title, as for Drake, he was given a hard blow in the heart and got really depressed that his female friend was laughing at his stupid title. But Kiri said next left Drake wished that if he was still alive, he wished to make Kiri his mate. Kiri. Fu 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 that really is a funny title, but honestly it kind of suits you if we were still alive, maybe I should have showed more of my breast, this left everyone quiet meanwhile, Issei supported Drake and tell him that he should have made Kiri his mate as for Drake, he couldn't help but agree and then curse his damn luck. He could have had a mate, but he died. Meanwhile Lengvold was thinking that Issei likes breast. She began to wonder if hers are the perfect size or are Issei preference, as Kiri said that her breasts are perfect. The two devils. Together with their dragons were speaking to each other silly. Meanwhile the goddess was annoyed and felt like she was left out, so she started a tantrum. Goddess. Hey. Pay attention to me. I was talking to you too. She said very angrily as the two devils began to apologize to her as the goddess began to cough and start her dialogue again. Ahem hello red dragon emperor and Ingvold Leviathan, descendant of the original Leviathan. This left Issei in shock to think his friend is a descendant of the original Leviathan. But before he could question Ingvald the goddess interrupted, I am one of the primordial gods of Olympus, Nyx, the goddess of night, she announced proudly as this left both of them surprise, because Issei never met Nyx, despite his visit to Mount Olympus. As for Ingvald this was the first time she ever met a goddess. Issei. So tell me what brings a goddess of the night here? He said as he was still in guard but also wondering why is she here? Nyx. I am glad you asked that question red dragon emperor. I am here for the leviathan. 
She declared put an essay even further, and guard as Ingvald was surprised by this, and asked why her. Ingvald. Why do you want me? She asked as Nyx began to float and starts to get closer to them before responding. Nyx. Sorry but that's classified and I won't tell you, so I recommend you Red Dragon Empire to move aside, or else you have to fight me. She said as she begins to get closer to them. Meanwhile, Issei refused to move, but he really wanted to know why does she want to take Ingvald, so he used his trusted ability on talking to Brest and asked Nick's Brest on the reason, and they said we're lonely that surprised him, so he asked as she was gets closer. Issei. Is it because you're lonely? That question left everyone quiet and made Nick stop in her tracks as she trembled. Nix. How did you know? She said trembling and wondering how the hell did he figured it out. Issei. Well I don't know if you want to know it's would embarrass you, said Issei while looking at the goddess as he scratches his cheek. While well, Ingvold stared at him. Nix. Say it or you'll receive the divine punishment. She shouted at him. Ingvold. Issei say it please, she gives puppy dog eyes. Issei. He felt pressured and charmed by the two girl, and said it, well I spoke to you breast and asked them the reason why you want Ingvold, and they said we're lonely, he said make both girls have pink cheeks, reason for Nyx is because he spoke to her breast like it was normal, and felt like she was betrayed by her own body. It seemed like her feelings are very honest and that she doesn't know what face she making right now. Ingvold. She was surprised by his ability on talking to Breast, but she understood Nyx now she must have been lonely as a goddess of night, so she walk up to her and hold her hands and walks her towards the Anir bench, then let talk about it. Nyx was surprised by this, but she didn't shake Ingvold hands away, instead followed her and sat on the right side of Ingvold, as Issei sat on the left, having Ingvold surrounded by both sides, as she was hesitant on say her why she was lonely, but the reassuring gazes from both of them made her take a deep breath and spoke about it. Nyx. I am the primordial goddess of the night, at the beginning I was with other primordials. But then they vanished or returned to their domains. I was left alone completely alone, even my brother Earbus walked away. Nyx looked at the ground, her word sounded with sadness and loneliness. Then the titans appeared, but it was a dark time. Then the Olympic gods rose up, they feared me. But after a certain time, they don't care anymore I was left alone again, the two devils were surprised she was left by everyone even her own brother, they felt really sorry for her. I try to bother others to gain a little attention, but it wasn't what I was looking for. When I fought Ingvold, I thought maybe I could make her my friend since we're both strong but. I thought you wouldn't want to be my friend for being a goddess, so I decided to kidnap you, but I guess failed huh? Sniff sniff. Nyx began to cry worrying the two devils. Ingvold didn't know she felt that way, neither did Issei. But Issei got up from the bench and walked to be in front of Nyx and hugged her. The primordial goddess, for the first time in millennia started to cry with sadness and joy. Sadness for her years of loneliness and not wanting to leave this warmth that Issei was provided. And joy to have the opportunity to finally have friends. But something else was growing inside her when she was with Issei. Ingvold. Couldn't help it, she couldn't. Her tears fell from her eyes because of the loneliness Nyx must felt. She approached and took the goddess hand together with hers, while Issei was trying to stop Nyx from crying. Okay then, we can be friends if you want to, Nyx raised her head, her eyes shone a smile as she nodded. Nyx. Thank you I would love to be your friend Ingvold Leviathan. Nick smile happy with Ingvold before turning to Issei you too Issei hi dude you wish to be friends with a goddess she was nervous from the answer. Issei. Sure I would love to be friends with you and if you need anything, don't be afraid to ask. Also, you're free to visit my home. He said with a smile. Time skip. Issei Haidu was currently in Gregory together with his girlfriend Valerie Lucifer, to support Gregory in keeping all the inventions in a completely isolated and safe room, to prevent anything from being stolen. It was several hours in which he was arranging boxes, storing important items and other things, at least it was what he could do after everything that he's been through. So to start with after the events with Nix and Ingvold. They said goodbye to each other, but since Ingvold had no place to stay, Issei invited her to his house, where he told her that he was going to explain the supernatural to them, and remove the hypnosis that is placed on. After explaining the situation to his parents they took it pretty easily, but they were still surprised that they had Lucifer in their house. But they were also very angry on the girls for cheating on Issei. When the girls showed up to collect their stuff being watched by Grafia, they were nearly killed by a same mother who had kitchen knives and threw them like an expert on the walls which frightening the girls in surprise, both husband and son that she could do that. Meanwhile Engvold had became their new daughter, but they've also noticed the relationship she has with Issei so like every mother. Mickey began to support them and to make them fall in love for each other. Surprisingly it worked and both of them started dating, but that didn't last long since the other girls who are interested in Issei became his girlfriends too. 
Let's go by order Ingvald and Issei live together as they both went to school together, since Issei parents also allowed Ingvald to go to school to experience it. As she turned into one of the most populous girls in school. Speaking of school the perverted trio has become the perverted duo why? Well, that's pretty simple Issei stopped acting like a pervert and started acting more gentlemanly and also joined the cooking club the reason. He wanted to be ready for the future, so might as well pick up some lessons unknown to him. Issei had a natural talent in cooking, even the club members were surprised that his food could actually taste good. So Issei title change into the prince of cooking another title that shamed Drake and made Kiri laugh. There were also rumors saying that the reason why Issei changed was for Ingvald which made a few girls jealous, but also support that love. Sadly, this even went to the ears of the Gremory group who seemed to not have a good day. The relationship between Issei and Ingvald has deepened in the past years Ingvald supports Issei in his training sessions and is her queen that ride his queen. Ingvald asked to join Issei peerage and he agreed, but sadly problems showed up and that being the devil council. They tried to force Ingvald to be an incubator for being the last descendant of Leviathan, but this didn't go well as the devil council no longer exists anymore, it almost seems like they were wiped off the earth. But luckily young devils took their places and started having new ideas for the devil world changing it into a better place, it seems things were going better for the devils. By the way the Op-Eyed Dragon show was changed into the Crimson Dragon show with the Crimson Dragon Knight, and the Sea Princess became the most popular couple then the Op-Eyed Dragon and the Switch Princess. The reason why was because the Sea Princess sang beautiful songs that attracted the attention of the audience on how the songs were meant her and the knight. And they finally became official after being pushed by everyone around them. But that didn't stop a few other girls. Lida was the next person to become his say girlfriend when the day came when he received his evil pieces, he spoke more to Lida while waiting patiently for evil pieces, and they got along very well that Lida came over to visit his say. Much to his parents' surprise as Mickey couldn't believe that she would have more daughter-in-laws which made her happy. After Lida next to follow was Ilmenhold who pushed her relationship on getting closer to Issei, as she also became a member of Issei peerage being two pawn pieces, and Issei began to let her suck his blood more often as he caresses her head. Next was Office who slowly began to learn emotions by the new residents of the Hyadu household and was taught about love by Ingvald who explained the feeling. Making Office aware of her feelings towards Issei and relied on Ingvald as support who gladly helped and made the two end up together. By the way Ingvald supports the harem idea of Issei, since she knows he won't choose one and treat them any different, but love them equally. Next was Sekvera who took her time on trying to be with Issei alone, as the two mainly talked about an I'm and Mecha, but one day Issei decided to give a present, and it was a limited edition Gundam, and presented it to her that left her completely shocked. So both of them started to have feelings for each other, as Sekvera started to stop acting cold towards everyone around her. Making the people around her. Happy to see her smiling, and they knew it was because of that essay. Even Sekvaria parents began to start planning on their engagement, as the two mentioned didn't say anything about it. Next was Nyx it took her a while to understand that she fell in love with Issei, who has done nothing but support her, and give her anything she wants to the point where she clinged to him like a cola for one entire day. Next finally accepted being part of Issei harem. Also let me not forget that she said that she also fell in love with Ingvold and claimed that she was bisexual. Adele Weiss was next as she was no longer blocked by Roswius, she decided to finally speak to Issei, as the two seemed to get along pretty well. They even exchanged sword techniques, not to mention they went in a couple dates which made Issei surprised that even though she had a face of seriousness and ready for battle. She can show a cute side of herself. Not mention her pies taste good. Momo explains to Issei about their childhood, leaving Issei surprised that he never realized that Momo was the white lily princess who he always protected from any danger when they were kids. They slowly started dating and eventually Issei asked Sona for an exchange of pieces with Momo, which the mentioned girl accepted and wished Momo good luck, along with her peerage partners. Also Issei congratulated Saji on winning Sona heart together with Ruruko. Valerie she took a while to finally express her feelings on Issei, as the mentioned boy was surprised that his rival actually had a cute side instead of a battle-hungry towboy. Not to mention that Albion and Drag realized why they fought in the first place, and it was just for fun. They didn't hate each other they just played around. This left the two carriers frozen, there wasn't no ancient history about them fighting instead they just played. Lavinia wanted to learn more about Issei because Valerie feeling towards him. Valerie said if she wants to know then she has to go on a date with Issei to find out, even though it was supposed to be a joke. Lavinia went on that date with Issei to get to know him as a person and couldn't help, but like being with him it was fun, and she had a really great time. One time Issei was enchanted by her singing voice, as Lavinia was getting closer to him and being straightforwardness with her advances. She even got along with Ingvald, and the two become great friends who have a passion for music. 
Suzaku was very hesitant at first the reason why is because Akeno, but lately they've been getting along more as they treat her well, and was there to support her when problems happened to Himajima clan. Ever since the incident with Yasaka happened the Yakai ask for one of the clans to watch over her, until they can find a better leader or wait until Kunu comes to age. The Himajima took the responsibility on taking care of Kunu have a say visit them more often to watch Kunu as well. When all three of them spend time together strangers thought of them as a young couple with a child. So a say life was filled, but nothing but happiness. He had girls that love him a good home that was left for him by his grandparents. He got back to training to get stronger for the girls and the factions, while also wielding his grandparents' swords being in Tetsu, Levitane. But one day when he invited the faction's leaders to his home and made dinner for them, which made everyone surprised by his delicious cooking skills, that made five women who were interested in him were even more interested, but then Michael looked at his say personal sword and asked about it. The say told the story that it was a sword they found in a temple and given it to him because it resembles me something he didn't understand. But the factions could understand it when they look at his say, then the sword it was like they were perfect, and said why he can't wield it because of fear, because it gave him nightmares. Seeing himself with the evil smile that was terrifying while hold the sword on his right hand and cover in armor. After telling his story Azazel began to pull out a device and analyze the sword, and found the problem was that the sword is a demonic sword, with an interesting ability of sealing solar object, and use that ability of who it seal. Issei was amazed by his sword, so asked Azazel to stop with the nightmares, so he agreed having Penemu to help as Michael asked to help along with Gabriel, Griselda. And so they were working on the sword and made it a holy demonic sword with the Excalibur fragments, as it gave a green glow. Gabriel was the one to gifted it to him, and told him not to be afraid because he and the sword are one in the same while holding his hand on hold the sword, and given him a smile that calmed to say, and they ask what its name. Now, then you guys are probably wondering what happened to Ria's and the other girls right? Well, then let me tell you what happened. Well Ria's lost her position as heir, which means that Ria's boyfriend dump her because all he wanted was her fortune that was all he cared about not about her, and only the Gremory. But sadly poor fool had died by the hands of an angry mother who didn't care about her anymore. But Ria's wasn't the only one suffering. Next Asia boyfriend the relationship could be said great if you consider it a compliment, since Asia boyfriend was just so annoyed by Asia for acting like a small animal, that needs to be protected, not to mention they hardly even talk making Asia cry, that she's not doing anything good enough that annoyed him, since he has to calm her down. But when they were separated Asia's boyfriend cheats on her behind her back. Until she found out and couldn't do nothing about it. All she could do is cry. Next Akeno boyfriend at first act like a kind gentleman and very cunning in the first date, but then he got sharp and cold with her trying to touch her more despite her pleas. But then Akeno didn't know what happened. She was greeting a classmate then the next thing she saw was that she was on the floor holding her cheek as her boyfriend had a sweet smile as he said, you can't talk to other men, than me, but was worse was that he humiliated her in the street, saying that he breaks up with her for being a slut. Make Akeno run home and tell her father everything. As for her boyfriend, he got the beating he deserved, but the damage was done Akeno stayed depressed, and the only thing that calmed her was a shirt of Issei. Zenovia thought everything would be fine with her boyfriend who was the captain of the school soccer team she tried to go out with him, she thought he was the one who would give her worthy heirs of her blood, everything was a stupid illusion. He was only been interested in her to lose his virginity, and to add insult to injury, he was weak, he always run from a fight not even trying. Sometimes leaving Zenovia behind. If only she listened to Griselda that have a child isn't just on have strong brave children warriors, but love that was created by two who love each other. Sadly she won't ever have that because her boyfriend left her, and will say would never come back. Irina stopped being an angel, and her parents were nothing but disappointed on her. They treated her the same, but not with much love. Speaking of her boyfriend he was nothing but a control person he really got annoyed when she starts saying things about God and worshipping him like a fanatic. Eventually he left her saying that he doesn't want to be with someone that annoys him too much. If only she stuck with her promise on being with Issei. The Neko relationship didn't last very long the person she was dating only done it out of a bet and said he would never be interested in a flat, short, unexpressive, who doesn't even bother showing a smile. Which led her into depression and desperately trying to look for the warmth she used to had those caresses on her head, sit on his lap, pamper her by feeding her sweets will never return. Ravel relationship ended the same time as Kaneko. Ravel boyfriend seemed to be the ideal partner a handsome and athletic gentleman she tried desperately on inviting him to tea. He said it was boring and said to stop act like a grandma as he show even more disrespectful towards her and the clothes she wears, but the worst was when he insulted her family. Let's say her family found out about this and roasted him to ash. She was brought back to the house of Phoenix she tried to be a say manager again, but he got new manage, and the show changed a lot with a new heroine. 
Roswius wasn't allowed to go to Asgard anymore, and her grandmother Gondel never wanted to speak to her ever again. As for the Valkyries they considered her an outcast, not thinking of her as a Valkyrie, but a slut what was worse was that Adelweiss is dating a say, and she seemed to be happy. As for Roswius' boyfriend their relationship was only last a week he was a handsome teacher who tried to have his advances towards her, until realizing that he was married and had children, and the reason for dating her was to boost his ego. The soccer relationship was terrible, the guy wanted political status for the leader of the Yakai faction also being known as the most beautiful woman of all factions was deceived, the worst was the relationship with her daughter, who wanted the Red Dragon Emperor as her father. He partner didn't T Kunu well instead he insulted her and scolded her. But one day Kunu had enough and punched Isaka boyfriend in the ball, and said that Issei was a better father, because he takes care of her and protects her while make her smile, and ran away to stay with Suzaku, who was currently going to be Issei lover. But one day she heard that her boyfriend was sleeping with another yakai, and said that he would remove Yusaka and make his lover the queen, so she kicked him out. And she desperately tried to get Kunu back, but couldn't because of the yakai and Himajima family, didn't let her pass. Hiroka relationship was nothing but a lie. He was a liar who said that he could defeat a dragon, and didn't care about her to beat her and slap her just to prove his superiority. One day Kuroka escaped and tried to see Lefe, but was attacked by Arthur, who said that a cat from the street doesn't belong here. Next she tried to see her leader who was on a date with the man she left, and felt envy on seeing them happy together. And now she became a wandering cat on the streets until joining Rhea's group just to have a roof over her head. Lefe relationship was terrible as its time shows off her discoveries on magic her boyfriend steals it and makes it seem like it was his idea. Force. Lefe not to say a thing about it. Since he wanted to boost his ego, but he made a terrible mistake. When he was going to hit Lefe when Arthur arrived and saw this and decapitated him. She was forced to go back to the Pendragon house and stop learning magic and start act like a noble and being stuck in the house, only able to come out if it's by her brother's side. All because they wanted a mature and strong handsome man who is not just a pervert like Issei once was, and they considered him a child. But would a child really save them from Chaos Brigade and the Beast of Apocalypse? Back with Issei. He was finishing with his task that should have took him some more hours, but he got finished really fast, he was thinking of spending his time with Valerie, but he wanted to see if Azazel had any more work for him. So he began to look for him until he was told that he was in a personal project he was working on. But no one could answer without the key card luckily or unlucky, he was given the key card to open anything, so he arrived and saw in a heavy suit, turning on a machine that opened the portal sucking anything as Azazel cheered that it worked. Azazel. It work it works. He desperately hopped even while wearing that heavy suit, but then he was being shouted by Issei who was currently floating the portal. Issei. Azazel what the hell is this thing why is it trying to suck me? Hey help. He tried, screaming to get his attention until finally getting it. Azazel. Huh? Issei what are you doing here? Get out of there or we'll lose you in another dimension. He shouted trying to catch up to Issei. Issei. Why the hell did you make a portal of another dimension? When did you had fucking time? Hurry up and shut this thing off he said, trying to activate his armor and try to use his thrusters to jet himself out. Azazel. Ah you're right I should have just pulled the lever. Before even turning around the lever as mentioned broke position to shut the portal down, but the lever flew very fast hitting Issei on the head and was pushed inside. As the portal started to close but Issei last words were heard. Issei. Azazel you bastard. It was the only words echo. Azazel just stood there frozen he looked at his machine and saw that it was destroyed from the inside he was going to tell the leaders, but then he was interrupted by someone opening the door. Azazel didn't just give Issei a key card, but also Valerie. Valerie. Azazel where my darling at last I sent him here and now he's gone not even Albion senses Drake anymore. So I'm asking you what did you do, she was very angry and knew that Azazel did something. Azazel. How the hell do you think I did anything? He basically was in panic he knew he was gonna be hunted down. Valerie. That's easy because whenever a problem shows up, it's always you she said before looking at the portal, then looking at her surroundings noticing a wall the project named Dimensional Travel, and just like that, she blew up and started to hunt him down. But she also called back up Ingvold, Nyx, Momo, Lavinia, Suzaku, Sekvira, Lida, Edelweiss, Office, and also told Penemu about what happened, so she contacted Gabriel Serafal, Griselda, and Misha. Azazel. Ah. I guess it's true never make a woman angry he said avoiding the explosions and attacks coming after him not even trying to look back. Legs and wing don't let me down. Unknown location. Pain was the first thing Issei felt. Dot. The permeating headache grinded his forehead, arresting him of any will to move. A simple twitch ignited the wounds, aches, and sores throughout his body. It was best for him to not move. Stillness offered an escape that he savored. 
Then a wet something streaked across his cheek, jolting a groan from him. Kaiu. Kaiu. The assailant's wet lashing sizzled upon his inflamed skin. What was this thing that refused to grant him any reprieve? Who? There you a girl's voice called out wait a moment, who did you jump on this time? Oh no, what happened to him? Issei could hear footsteps rushing towards him. Each step intensified his headache. A hand like a breeze on a summer day pressed against his forehead. He's running a high fever, and his clothes are such a mess as that blood. I need to bring him to Dr. Roman. Mashu. Did you find Fu yet? Oh my, what's going on? Another girl called out. Mashu. Ritsuka Senpai. He's hurt, we need to bring him to the infirmary, the girl pleaded. Ritsuka. Pressed her finger against his wrist. His pulse isn't irregular, despite his heavy fever. All this blood on his clothes, did he get attacked? Is he conscious? Issei opened his eyes, wincing at the bright lights from the ceiling. Few tears rushed out to soothe his aching eyes. All he saw a shade of pink and red. Weary blink settled the shades into two people. A short pink-haired girl with glasses and a red-haired girl. Something wet, perhaps a lick, drew his attention to a white-furred animal at his hand. Issei. Who are you? He struggled to form coherent words. Where am I? Drag you there? Ritsuka. Easy now, I'm Ritsuka Fujimaru. And this is, the red-haired girl pointed to her companion, Mashu Kirilite. We'll get you to Dr. Roman. Can you stand? Issei. I'll try. With a shaky nod, he staggered to his feet. His knees were shaking if Ritsuka and Mashu didn't hold onto his arms, he would have fallen. They set off down the hallway, one step at a time. He grimaced, thanks. Ritsuka. Don't strain yourself. Do you recall what happened to you? Issei. I he was going to answer, but a voice prevented him too and was given him a headache. He remembered that voice it was drag, so he decided to keep quiet from his newfound companions. Ritsuka. Never mind, you're not in any condition to answer. The infirmary is just around this corner, Issei sigh in relief on not explaining what happened to him and only thought. Issei, mind. Azizel where the hell did you send me? That's it guys. Thanks for watching and supporting us. See you in the next part.